What's up, my precious little pack, and welcome back to Vega Conflict. I do apologize about the very late video today. <clears throat> but, I'm still getting over stuff. My voice hasn't been the best at times, so didn't know it would be best to record. Right now it's the best for me, so let's jump right into it. First off, Planet Strike. The alien Armageddon came to an end. <laughs> That was entertaining as it was just entertaining. It was hilarious to me. Uh, the Planet Strike is currently ongoing, so I'm going to talk about the current thing, which is Planet Strike. First off, the prize recommendations. Right off the bat, go for the Ragnarok Carrier first, Impulse Beam, all levels, starting with level 2 and working your way up, and then jumping back down level 1. All of the um, equipable weapons, all of the reusable items, Go for them. Bomber Squadron 3, right off the bat. Alright, so let's do this. Ragnarok Carrier, Bomber Squadron 3, and... Huh. I guess Spectral Armor 3. Nah. Ragnarok Carrier first, Bomber Squadron 3 second. Impulse Beam 3 third. Then reusable items, level 3 versions before anything else. Then Spectral Armor level 3, Reinforced Rails level 3. Mm. Wave Driver Turret, I've never used that. I know what it does though, so I can recommend it. Next up, Interceptor Wing level 3 for your command center when it's, same le when it's able to equip, well, the bridge when it's capable of equipping them, as well as your fleet bay and your ship factory when they're high level. Uh, next up, I would say go for the Vega ship build times and stuff like that. Reduce the build time of your Vega ships as much as you can, because that's what you're going to be building. You're going to be building Vega ships. You're going to be building the carrier this time around. And resources, just because everybody can. Let's jump back up. And what is the strategy I've been using to farm during the event? Strafing. I'll show you what I need here in a second. I'm going to use my low level fleet to hit a 45. Okay, I don't need them because I'm not building any Vega ships right now. Okay, let's grab okay. you. Let's go out here. Let's find a 45. I should have it bookmarked. Look at that. This is all a low level setup, starting with right off the cruisers and everything. You should be able to get everything fairly easily just by simply farming. And I forgot how small these ships are compared to the Axis and Xeno Division. It's same setup as with my high level one, because it's tried and true, and as they get too close, they get opened up on by the battleships. I mean, the cruisers. I don't use battleships. Okay, let's engage this one first. Second. This could have been a lot more well executed than it's gone. And I have a second fitting for my Revelation cruisers to fight alien related targets. I'll refit these ones and show you that fitting 
hopefully before the next alien strike. Most of it's on a single cruiser, okay. And I also want to talk about the new calendar setup and stuff like that. The weekly calendar that's going to be happening and stuff like that. Depending on the payout of the individual fleets that we can hit, that'll be the thing that makes or breaks the new setup of how we'll have sector strikes, alien strikes, planet strikes running throughout the course of a week. This could be a very, very good thing or very, very bad thing. It's up to Kixai to decide which it's going to be. Hopefully they understand the importance of this new setup that they made. Because this will allow low-level players to advance at a rate that not even I could have when I was lower. <clears throat> and with the fitting I intend on giving to my Revelation Cruisers, provided you have all the tech to do the same, and it tests and it's proven to be true, this may be a fitting that you can use to tackle mm, level 60, 65, 70 fleets one after another. <clears throat> no, voice, don't go, I still need you. <laughs> but the new setup as it stands is we'll have a plan strike on one day, sector strike the next, alien strike after the sector strike, all within a three course day, and each one will end that day. So it'll start one day, and then at the mor in the morning at, what was it, 8 a.m. the next day, it'll end. So it'll start one day, end the next, next one will start, and it'll run like that. Depending on the points payout, it'll be, I could see it being very useful for low level players to easily advance because you'd be able to do everything on a weekly basis, and all you'd have to do is decide what you want to do. Do you want to do plan strike this day? or skip it and wait until Sector Strike the next day, or wait until the Alien Strike the day after that. And once Alien Strike ends, it'll go back to the Planet Strike, and then it'll go Sector Strike, and um, Alien Strike. And on the first and third, or is it the second and fourth week of the month, they'll be running all the strikes on the same day, towards the, towards the end of the week. I don't have the... Times pulled up and anything like that, but you can check it out on the forums in the official post. I think it may be a good thing, it just depends on the points payout, like I said. Because it'll allow me to more readily gain access to the higher tier stuff that I just don't have. But, there, are, there was a few things I want to talk about today, but I'm going to divide them up into individual, individual videos. Yeah. Nose is becoming clogged up again. Roger. It's getting annoying being sick. But. So far, everything in game has been running smoothly. Everything's been quiet for the most part. And I intend on doing daily videos again once they get start with the new setup on the 11th. Yeah. I do remember that. The new setup for the weekly setup and everything like that will be running on the 11th and after the 11th, so everything after that, it'll be set up. And there was more than just that. There was supply runs specifically for resources and stuff like that on specific days. So, this could be really, really good for the game or really, really bad. I think it'll be really good if the points pay out in the strikes in higher level strikes specifically are improved to say the least specifically for the alien strike because we don't have rates for anything like that yet because it'll be running for only a 24 hour period hopefully it won't be a giant mess and hopefully it'll actually be a very very doable thing but only time will tell but along with that I'd also like to talk about a few points and a few things in the game one, uh, same thing I've said before, we already got it for the bases and it would be very useful for our fleets. The repair time reduction in bases received that no matter what you equip on them, on your modules, the repair time doesn't go up over the base repair time of what you get for upgrading it, so it never goes above this. That could be a very good thing for our fleets, especially the high level fleets, let's take a look at this one. 
Look at that. 21 hours and 53 minutes. How long did these, sheep, these ships take to repair in the first place? Hmm. It was an hour. Less than that. One hour repair time by default. Just one hour. I would like to see repair time reductions. Similar to what we had with the bases, so that no matter what we equip on a ship, it doesn't increase the repair time. So the base repair time is whatever it is at its base. At its core, it wouldn't go up, wouldn't go down. But make it so that there's nothing you can do to increase or decrease the repair time. And that would really subdivide and categorize the tiers even more because let's take a look at this. These ships by default, actually I can just show you what they have by default just by going like this. Revelation Cruiser, 18 minutes 40 seconds. It's a tier 3 ship and that repair time right there no matter what you equip on would be an amazing repair time. I think that it would be a good thing to alter it and change it so no matter what we equip on ships, it's like the modules in the base. It doesn't increase the base repair time. It leaves it at this base. Because that would make lower tier stuff a lot more easy to play because you no matter what you do with it, it wouldn't increase the repair time. So you'd have instant repair stuff no matter what you do. Or you'd have low repair time stuff on sh certain ships and it would just in general be a good advancement for the game. Because we can't get them to lower the repair time. Well, here's an idea to lower the repair time. Don't lower the actual repair time of individual items. Just make so it's got base repair time that relies on the ship type that you're using. And it does stack up. Because if I go blueprints, go ships, well, holes. Base repair time. Base repair time. Base repair time. Base repair time. Base repair time base repair time and these are stacked because let's take a look let's go from the guardian cruiser to the covenant cruiser this is the top tier cruiser as it stands right now let's take a look at the punisher actually let's jump down let's take a look at the punisher next they both have high health very high health so their repair time is very balanced let's take a look at the covenant cruiser it has nowhere near the health but the repair time is I say acceptable for the time same with, let's drop down the next one, the Corinthian Cruiser. Actually, no, it's a Heretic Cruiser. Exact same health, exact same repair time. Exact same weight. It's literally the exact same ship, except for it gets more armor and less mass, because, well, it's the Iron Star, Divi Iron Star Core. Xeno Division is higher up. Let's see. Let's drop down again. Each of their repair times is fairly well balanced under the base system that they have until we start equipping them, then they become garbage. And yes, I do call them garbage. But a simple improvement such as that would greatly improve the playability of the game. Because you see this hour right there? That would be almost completely dropped. This would just be a, what, seven or eight hour repair time fleet. Just the way it is. And I, I could accept repairing that compared to this, because I mean, I'd be able to play twice a day when I completely destroy the fleet over once a day when I completely destroy the fleet. But let me know what you think about the, that type of idea and should we try and push it? Should we try and get Kickside to do it? Because <laughs> each tier is, as I showed, they're balanced. As they go up, they gain more health and they have higher repair time. As we go down, they, they just they have the lower repair time, but that's also the negative. They have the lower health. But it would see a positive of game. It would see a very positive thing in the game because there would be more people playing just because they have more reason to play because they actually don't have to sit around waiting for repairs longer. If I destroy my top tier fleet, I could repair it in seven hours over waiting until the next day. Again, my next highest fleet, 15 hours, 45 minutes. I... I don't see any point in taking the time to repair because I would just break it and then log off and wait until the next day get on instead of playing multiple times in the course of one day. I would like to actually log in and play each day and I think that just changing this no matter what you equip on it, it wouldn't increase their repair time. It would be, it would have to be a tried and true thing. We'd have to find out if it would be more beneficial for the game or not. We'd have to play test it and stuff like that to see if it should be reduced or if it should stay the same or if it should be at least modified. 
Because as it stands, the game could use improvements, and we could list a few good ways to improve the game just by taking off the ideas that they've already put in. But go ahead and let me know what you all think down below about that idea. Next up, we let's take a look at... The Reckoning is coming, and all of the evidence points to Rhea being the enemy. And we'll get this. This event will start on the 7th. So we got three days. It'll be after they move people around and delete the sectors that were very low on the alien Armageddon. But along with that, there's... Uh, I, I'm just waiting to see the tech reveal video for the new ship. I'm hoping it's not an exact copy of the suppressor because, to be honest, the aliens aren't using... Unless you're fighting in the bases, they're not using squadrons as much. They're using summoned ships. And another thing like the suppressor would be... It would be good in PvP. I could see the aspect for that. But in PvE, unless I'm basing and I just need something to decimate little squadrons very quickly, I wouldn't see a point in getting it. Because I hit mainly the alien targets because they're easier to do for me than the bases. And I don't use suppressors because they don't spawn any small things that fight me or anything like that. The Reapers, they do. They spawn a few of them, but I mean, one barrage from a single cruiser and they're all gone. So there's not much of a threat there. So for this next special ship, let's hope there's not a duplicate of the suppressor. Let's hope it's at least something different, something that is... These ships are supposed to be unique and different. If I'm not mistaken, were they not? Someone let me know down below. But I want to see them be different than other ship classes. I want to see them take unique roles that... I want them to take unique roles that we could see a carrier be fit for, but have a single ship that we can put multiple in. So let's see them boost damage types or something like that. Maybe if you equip... Give the next specialist a unique module for something like, let's say... It can only equip it, and it boosts the weapon damage of an energy class weapon by 20%, 10%. Or it boosts projectiles by 10%, boosts explosive by 10%, or boosts alien damage by 10%. Let's see something like that. Let's see something different. Let's see a, like... Let's see a support ship that is truly a support ship that relies on other ships to protect it, but is beneficial to them. Because that would be something that I could say would be very, very useful. And I generally would want. And right now I'm collecting all the ships. I'm actually going back through. And each strike I'm making sure that I'm getting all of the blueprint holes. Because I actually want to collect every ship now. I want to get everything. Everything that is available in the blueprints I want to try and unlock. I know there are certain ships that you can't unlock because they're given away. And I only know of one such ship. That's the Blood Raven. And it looks kind of like a mix between... It's a frigate. And it kind of looks like it's a mix between the tornado and the eagle down here. Oh god, this thing still... I, I've come to the conclusion for this one. I was looking up play videos and stuff like that of it. I don't think it deserves the battleship name because it's it's not a battleship. It's far from it. It is way too slow, it's way too weak. But last I wanted to talk about was actually something for Kickside. And an idea for the player base. Where to? We've seen the game change over and over and we need balance, a balance change now. We need one specifically for the Axis Division and the Xeno Division because they're just so much more powerful than the previous and Infernal Weapons, I can't say that they weren't overpowered because they were as well, but then we got this new one it just stepped in as the big boy in the block. I do have a few of the Alien class weapons and I'm slowly filling out my inventories with them as I slowly gather them up. But I honestly can't say that they weren't overpowered because they were, they were, they were on a class all their own. <laughs> but I want to see stuff like that slightly change. Let's see a, 
want to see some new stuff. I want to see something different than an energy weapon that just has higher range than the previous one, has higher damage. I want to see energy weapon that may have lower range, but a much higher damage or a much lower damage output. Let's let's see tiered weapons. Kicks I add on as you guys progress through the game. I want the game to go like this. If you want to try and save your game, listen up. Make content that is for everybody. Make lower tier content, mid tier content, high tier content. High tier content would be end game content, which is what I'm slowly playing with. And I'm not end game end game, but I'm towards there. But let's see every new introduction. Let's see possibly a researchable ship of an, a specialist class. So we can start, so lower levels can play and understand how to use the specialist class or have them similar so that they know it's a different type of ship than the traditional cruiser, battleship, destroyer, frigate, cutter, and carrier. And if you do another ship like the Legion battleship, you'd best make sure that you don't call the battleship and you'd best make sure that it has special slots because the Legion gets no special slots and if I'm not mistaken, even on the wiki and even on the Vega ship calc, when you mark upgrade it, I don't even think it gets specials then. Even carriers get specials. But let's see some difference. Let's see something different. Let's see some new stuff. I I just want to see new stuff in general. There is new stuff being added in the game, but as quickly as I'm starting to progress through the game, I'm starting to ramp up how much I play in the events. I'm starting to gather up a few million points at a time, I'm buying the ships, the weapons, everything all at once, and I'm just collecting everything I can now, and eventually I'm going to just be able to buy everything one after another without much effort. I want to see low tier stuff too that I can buy and build and play around with, with other low tier players just to have fun. So, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Do you think it would be entertaining? Do you think it would be a good idea? Um, let me know below in the comments section. It would be, it'd be interesting to say the least. It would be fun. It'd be a new breath of fresh air. Yeah. Okay. Next up, let's talk about the Marauder faction. How utterly, entertainingly useless they are for now. Under the current standard, they have very limited weaponry, very limited range, very limited everything. There's I. I, see, I literally see no reason to equip them with anything at the current standing because they're effectively useless. They're outclassed and outgunned by their Xeno Division and Axis counterparts. Very much so. Their weapons have a shorter range. Oh, look, they have great damage, but they're going to be dead by the time they open fire. Until the battleship. I think the battleship will be the thing that everybody will go for because it'll get the range boost. And if you roll with a carrier with it, with the movement speed buff, it should be just fine. And the thing I'm waiting for specifically is, I'm waiting for the, let's see here. Nope, I was already in weapons. I'm waiting to see the Eclipse Driver, the Xeno, yeah, the, I'm waiting to see the Void Eclipse Driver, that's what I'm waiting to see, I'm waiting to see that, I want to see what it is. I want to see just how useful it'll be because the current meta is battleships with stupidly long range and they just win. So I want to see a void battleship that can take that away and make it so that PvP has its place by being unique to them. But as it stands, they, they don't have the range, they lack the resistance, they, they literally have next to nothing. But aside from that, I don't have many other complaints for them because, I mean, I don't use them. I will be using them in the future, and I will be getting into PvP content. So for any of you PvP fans out there, after I get and feel the fleet of the... Whatever the battleship's name is going to be for the Marauder faction. I'm going to be using it, and I'm going to be having fun with it. But for the time being... Until I get the battleship and they release the destroyer and the, along with the destroyer comes its weapon which is the long range projectile. Which is what I'll be waiting for more or less going to be sitting out. So you could be waiting a few months. 
But I think that's going to be about it for this video. I've talked about everything I felt I wanted to. I saved the stuff I wanted to save for other videos for said videos. I listed off everything I wanted you guys to try and get to advance. Uh, yeah, that's about it. What are your guys' thoughts on everything I've mentioned in the video? Go ahead and say so below. If you have any of your own ideas, say so below. Let's let's start interacting a little bit more and stuff like that. And as you know, I do reply in the comments. It may take a day or two for me to reply, but I do reply. Um, I don't have anything else to say, so I'm really going to end the video here. If you like the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe. It really helps. The views are just as important. And as always, everybody, I'll see you later.